Isabel Schmidt, and today I would like to present to you my topic on artificial intelligence. But before we get started, what is artificial intelligence? Well, in contrast to natural intelligence that humans and animals possess, artificial intelligence is when a machine mimics the human mind, especially the human decision-making and learning processes. And so, in 1950, Alan Turing wanted to figure out whether a machine would have strong or weak artificial intelligence. And weak artificial intelligence is when a machine is capable of imitating the human mind, but is not capable of thinking for itself. While strong artificial intelligence is when the machine is capable of imitating the human mind so well as though it seems to think for itself. And so the test went the following. There would be three rooms. In the first room, there would be a human. And in the other two rooms, there would be another human and a machine. And the first human would communicate with the other two at the same time. And if he was unable to figure out in which room the machine was by the end of the corresponding, it was said to be that the machine would have strong AI, also known as artificial intelligence in short. And this is because it was capable of imitating the human mind so well as though it seemed it could think for itself like a human being. But how is artificial intelligence relevant to me? Well, <laughs> when I get up in the mornings, I'm a little bit cranky, and I really like listening to music on YouTube. And when I just type in the first two letters of my favorite song, pops up right at the top, because my computer knows that I like listening to the song a lot. And it gives me another song as a reference that I might enjoy too. This is a form of artificial intelligence. But I'm sure I'm not the only one that sees and uses artificial intelligence every day. Some of you might have seen chatbots at airports that direct us to the right terminal, or even language translation sites like DeepL or Google Translate. And especially since corona, governments have been using disease mapping, which helps the governments track phones to see where a human has been in the past few weeks. This helps the stop of the spread of the virus. But not only do we all use and see artificial intelligence every day, but many sectors in our society use artificial intelligence too. By 2023, it was said to be that there would be 8 billion voice assistants worldwide. And if a business would use artificial intelligence, it said that their productivity increases by 40%. And 77% of all machines we see and use today contain one form of artificial intelligence or another. Now, one sector that specifically in the last few years has been using artificial intelligence more and more is our industry. For example, the Canadian company Mindstar. They did a small experiment to see how long it would take a group of people to develop an entire project idea and how long it would take a supercomputer, so artificial intelligence to develop a project idea. And yes, it takes the group of people six to eight months to develop an entire fully-fledged project idea, but it takes the supercomputer 72 hours to develop an entire project idea. Incredible, right? Our industry also uses artificial intelligence in the form of drones to monitor equipment. Also, artificial intelligence is used in our technology. For example, job applications have been done by artificial intelligence now because artificial intelligence can scan these for key words or key competences that companies want their future employees to have. It's also used in the medicine because artificial intelligence can be used to develop drugs faster, which can help our entire medical services prevent people from dying. This is incredible. But there's one issue that is incredibly difficult for our population and society to conquer today, and that is our growing population. Now, I like to eat every day, and I'm sure you do too. In fact, I think all 7.8 billion of us over the entire globus want to eat every day. And so we need to use more advanced technologies in our agriculture, because as we know, resources are scarce. Water is scarce. Water is required for our agriculture section. But also our climates have becoming harsher. This all affects our agriculture. And therefore, we can use artificial intelligence to help us 
increase the amount of crops and products we get from agriculture. They do this as when farmers can give in the input of all the different climates and soil conditions and the water usage into, for example, a specific app and gain the best possible way to gain the largest amount of resources we need so that we can eat every single day. But especially since corona, I'm sure some of us have been doing our education online. For example, I spent three entire months doing all my schoolwork on my computer. And I'm sure a lot of you have been doing that too. So therefore, artificial intelligence has been becoming a key factor in our education as we have access to many online sites and platforms that help us develop our learning every single day. But artificial intelligence can do all of these things due to its great benefits that it has to offer. For example, it is extremely logical as all of its decisions that it makes are logical. But how is this a benefit? Well, a lot of decisions humans make are emotionally based. But this could be a negative as a lot of emotionally based decisions lead to resources being lost or maybe wrong decisions being made. Artificial intelligence is extremely resourceful too as it does not waste time or resources. And due to the fact that artificial intelligence doesn't show weaknesses, it can also stay awake 24 hours, help our industry. But another key factor or benefit of artificial intelligence is its fast learning capabilities. If we look at the education of a human compared to the education of artificial intelligence, we notice one large difference, and that is time. I mean, it takes a human 12 years to finish secondary education, plus maybe additional years to finish college or university to specialize into one profession. But artificial intelligence can gain all of this knowledge within minutes, hours, in an update, a transfer of data. This is incredible. But what does this lead to? Well, this could lead to many jobs in our future being transferred from humans doing them to artificial intelligence doing them for us. And therefore, Professor Pistono wrote this book called Robots Will Steal Your Jobs, but that's okay. Because he believes that even though, yes, artificial intelligence is doing all the work for us, apparently, according to him, we will still all receive a universal basic income. And this could lead to us having more free time for self-fulfillment or family matters. If we look at this graph right now, we can also see that the human capabilities are much higher at the moment compared to the capabilities of artificial intelligence. But scientists have been believing that over the next few years, the capabilities of artificial intelligence will overtake the capabilities of the human. And although scientists say, yes, this can be good in some forms as, yeah, artificial intelligence could be doing some of the jobs for us, in developed countries, it could mean that in developing countries where they do not have access to as much artificial intelligence as developed countries do, this could lead to mass unemployment. But this isn't the only negative that artificial intelligence has for us. For example, artificial intelligence is extremely expensive to produce as it requires scarce resources that aren't found all over the world today. It also requires specific people needed to program it, as well, not all of us can program a robot, right? But the fact that it lacks emotional intelligence can also be seen as a negative. Let's take an example of a psychologist, for example. Do you think artificial intelligence can take over the job of a psychologist like a human could? Probably not, right? Because humans allow empathy to another human, while artificial intelligence does not have emotions and therefore is unable to give the same support another human could have. But the fact that artificial intelligence could be used in the military later on is also an extreme negative, as some of us might have not even thought about this. But let's say only developed countries have access to artificial intelligence, and our resources are becoming more scarce by the second. And while scarce resources could lead to many conflicts and possible wars in the future, 
But what happens when only developed countries have artificial intelligence on their side and developing countries still have humans in their military? This could lead to, well, developed countries gaining more resources while developing countries are lacking resources and struggling. This could increase the poverty gap in our entire globus in the future. And the fact that superintelligence might occur in the future could be a negative too, as superintelligence is the point where artificial intelligence starts thinking for itself. It's the point where it does not want to do what humans do anymore, but it can start developing its own thought, continuing its own algorithm. But what happens when this happens, right? What happens once superintelligence occurs? Well, at the moment, artificial intelligence does what we want it to do. It, we program artificial intelligence to benefit us. But what happens when artificial intelligence doesn't do what we want it to do anymore? And it might even come to the idea that Okay, what if we want to save this planet? What if we want to keep us alive as long as possible? What if we want to save as many resources as we can? And it might jump, artificial intelligence, might just jump to the conclusion, well, what is the source of all these resources being wasted? What is the source that is polluting our entire globus? Well, as you might all have already guessed, it's the humans, right? But <laughs> what could happen once humans are in this position? Well, <laughs> it could lead to a potential robot versus human war, as we might have seen in many movies. And so Harari, who wrote the book Homodeo, says, the only way that we can prevent us from succumbing to artificial intelligence is to know ourselves. So I suggest for all of you to know thyself. So once you go home tonight, I want you to go digging deep down inside your souls and start knowing thyself, unless you want to succumb to the power of artificial intelligence. And so the question I want to leave you with today is, can we be sure that artificial intelligence will always want what is best for humans? Thank you.